All right. So today we're going to start mixing our paint. This is on page 14. The first thing we need to do is mix a um, green. So I'm going to take uh, three scoops of yellow, three big scoops of yellow, and two scoops of blue. So I'm going to clean it. And put two scoops of one blue, two blue, and make a green here. Nice green. Mix that together. Okay, that's the first step. Next thing I want to do is I want to split my green um, and I'm going to split it into three piles. I'm going to make a pile over here, kind of three even piles, and a pile over here. This one's a little make three piles of green, and then in one of the piles, I want you to add some white not a lot of white, maybe a half scoop of white into one of the piles and mix that around. So we have a lighter green now. I'm taking some of this lighter green and I'm pouncing it um, up in here, letting some of the green follow th fall through, and I'm going to go all the way down here. I'm going to go all the way down across. I use still using the paint that's just in mine, and I'm trying not to make a straight line. So I was kind of making too much of a straight line, so I went up here a little bit more, and um, connecting it on the right side and pouncing in just a little bit of this light green in here, not too much. Um, bringing some in here as well on the left side. So this was all from one um, dip in my white green. This is still all the paint that's left. So see how I am really pouncing straight up and down, trying to get as much of that green out of my brush as possible. Okay, that's with the light green, the green plus white. Okay, still going up in here. Notice I'm not going straight across here. I'm going kind of in an angle up here. Angles are really good in, um, in landscapes. Now I'm going to mix a light blue. Okay, so I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to put one scoop of blue and one scoop of white. So clean your brush in between. You're going to get a light blue here. Mix in a nice light blue. I'm going to paint in my uh, mountain lake here, and I'm just going to take the light blue on my brush and go left and right, left and right left and right, don't go up and down, go left and right um, to kind of mimic the ripples of a river. And you can go over the edges of the green um, grass. Okay, so I'm going over the edges because we're gonna keep painting along the edges. So I'm just going over the edges, just getting one layer down of the light blue. And I'm really scrubbing with my brush to get all the paint off my brush. What we're going to do um, is a little surprising. So I'm going to clean and dry my brush. And then I'm going to add a little bit of green to the edge of my brush. Can you see how little bit of green I have on? It's not the whole brush. Just I just touched it. Didn't even get to the back, really. So with my clean, dry brush, 
I'm going to add just a little bit of light green to the edges of the brush like that, just a little bit, tiny bit. And I'm going to take it and I'm first just going to wipe on my paper towel a little bit to get some of it off. And then I'm going to um, put it in a few places in my water. See, I didn't put it all over my water, just here, here, and here. And then I'm going to scrub it in. So I'm going to go left and right, left and right, and really scrub it in. Um, so it's very light green in a few places. You can't even really see it on, on the um, video, but it's there. Um, if you were in person here with me, you would see this. The next thing we're going to do in our water is we're just going to add a little bit of blue. So with a clean, dry brush, I'm just going to put a little bit of blue on the edges of my brush like that. I'm going to first wipe it off on my paper towel so it's drier. And I'm just going to put it on the right side, not all over, just in a few places on the right side and down towards the bottom and towards the top. Completely wipe off my brush and then scrub that in, left and right, left and right, scrubbing that in. Do that that technique of the, what we just did, but we're going to do it now with white on the left side. So just get a little bit of white on the edge of your brush, wipe off a little bit on the paper towel, and then on the left side, I'm just going to add in some areas. You can go in the middle, maybe a little bit back here, just adding in some areas of white, and then scrubbing it in. And when I say scrub in, it actually kind of blends it a little bit if it's still wet um, into the background. So you can see some of the blue over it. And if there's any areas in this water that you don't like, like I really don't like this big blue part right here, you just go back over with your light blue, just a little bit of light blue, go back over, and add in some light blue wherever you want if you don't like it and scrub it. Um, but you can see I'm not making um, big blobs, I'm making more like lines. Okay, and I can add in some more light blue or dark blue if I want. I could add in some more green or light green if I felt like it. So um, this is a process where you just go back and forth with these colors until you get the water that you like. So the next thing we need to do is we need to make rocks and we haven't made rocks yet. So this is something new, okay? So we're going to take our, um, remember how we took our green and we split it into three different piles? Well, I'm gonna take one of my piles of green and I'm gonna turn it into brown. So green plus red, is brown. So I'm just going to take a scoop of my red and mix it in to make a brown. And if it doesn't get brown, if it only gets like an army green, then you want to add in more red. So mixing, mixing, you want to get that nice brown and mine still might need a little bit more red. We'll see here when I get it mixed. So I'm just gonna add a touch of red until I get the brown that I, I want. Um, but a nice um, warm brown would be great. So that would be why we added the red. Okay, and then with that brown, I need you to scoop it, half of it, and make a second little pile of brown. Okay, so we're going to split that brown in half and make a second pile. 
So in a minute, we're going to do something with the second pile. But for right now, just split that brown in half. Okay, so with our brown, we're going to make rocks. And um, rocks are something, um, so rocks in a river or rocks in the ocean or the Puget Sound are very rounded because the water is constantly moving over them, either with the tide or the flow of the river. But rocks in... Um, a uh, mountain lake are much more angular, much more geometric. So I'm going to make a big rock over here on the right side. So I'm going to make it kind of triangular. Maybe it even dips down and goes back up. Okay, and I'm going to make it like that. And I'm going to fill this in with my brown. And if it's still wet underneath, it might blend a little bit. That's okay. We're going to do a second coat in a, in a minute or two. So just do a nice thin coat of brown on this rock. Looks kind of big, but remember things in the foreground are bigger and things in the background are smaller. Okay. So then I might add another rock, maybe right in here. And so this one's going to be smaller. So I'm just kind of doing a rough triangle. Just kind of touched it with my corner to make a triangle. I can do rocks all sorts of places. Maybe I'll do another rock right here. Kind of a weird triangle there going out into the water. So make a few rocks. You can make them all over, but just I'm just going to make three for today. I'm kind of blowing on my paint a little bit to get this to dry because I want to put a second coat of brown on top so I can't see through it. So um, I'm just painting on a second coat. So you guys do that too. Paint on a second coat of brown so you don't see the water and the grass through it too much. I don't, these back here, I'll just add a little bit too. Oops. Okay, now I'm going to take my brown, you know how I made two piles of brown, and um, whichever one's my smaller pile, I'm going to add a little bit of white, not a full scoop. Okay, so I'm just going to um, add some white to one of my browns to make a light brown or a lighter brown. So mixing that in, you can always add more white, but uh, we don't have a lot of brown here, so um, it's just a lighter brown. And then um, we're going to put this lighter brown on the left side of the rock. So I'm just going to kind of paint in. I'm going to go down here and paint in. Just kind of paint in some areas on the left side of the rock. And then clean my brush and get my regular brown and kind of blend in more regular brown. Okay, and see how I went down, wherever there was a downward, I kind of went down. And you can keep going back and forth over these areas until you get something that looks like a rock. I can go back into here and blend to if I took too much out, I can add in some more light. In the background, it's just a suggestion of rocks. It's not really something that looks too much like a rock. Um, this part is having trouble keeping the brown paint. Okay. Let me, zoom, let me move it up a little bit so you can see without the glare. That is what my rock looks like. So we're going to add a tree on the left side here. And the tree is going to start well up into these foothills. Or maybe it's going to start even up into the mountains. Because it's going to be a very close tree. So it's going to look really big. So I'm going to take my regular brown. 
I'm going to start way up here and I'm going to just draw a line. Remember how we did trees before? It doesn't matter if it wiggles, pushing down more. The brushes are um, not much pressure on the brushes up here and then a lot more pressure on the brushes down here. And then I can also take my lighter brown and just put it on the left side, just a little bits. Just put in some little bits on the left side here for the lighter brown. So we're gonna paint in a tree and I'm just gonna use my brown as my base this time because there's so much green in here. So I'm, not, I'm gonna do one of those pouncing trees. Remember how we pounce? And you can leave some space between branches and it's gonna go right off the edge. So I'm just using my brown to pounce, my regular brown, pounce, 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 using all of the um, color on my brush, then getting some more brown. Don't go all the way down. And you can kind of see I'm kind of curving down and then up. Let me see if I can focus it a little bit better. And you're still going to see some of the background behind the tree. At least for right now. It's very dark and it's very hard to tell the difference, although the camera is actually picking that up. Okay, so putting in my brown, cleaning my brush, and then I'm just going to go over with my regular green, just taking my regular green, okay, and going over straight up and down, pouncing. Straight up and down on those branches. You can go over the trunk. Make sure you go over the trunk. But you can still see the background through the spaces in the trees. Cleaning my brush off. The next thing we're going to do is a little unexpected, but we are going to take our light blue. Our light blue. And we're going to add this as our highlight. And our highlight's coming from the left, just like it was for the rocks. So I'm just going to go on the left side. I'm just going to pounce in a few areas over the, over the trunk. Just pounce in a few areas of the left branches and maybe on the very edges of the branches on the right. Just pounce in a little bit. Less is more on this light blue. Okay, but as you look at it, your, your eye will kind of squint and it won't really, yes, it looks blue if you look at it, but if you look at the whole scene, it just kind of adds a little highlight. Okay, I cleaned off my brush and I'm going to um, take my green, just take a little bit of green on my brush and then a little bit of brown on my brush. So this is like blending on a brush. So again, I just pulled out just a little bit of green, not a lot, and a little bit of brown on my brush. That makes it like a darker green. And I'm going to put in my shadow, shadow is going to go down like this. And it's okay if you don't have a, you shouldn't have a solid line. See how I'm kind of sketch, 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 and some of the water is coming through. That's what the shadow should look like. So the next thing I want to add in is some of that reed grass. Remember we were doing reed grass before? 
And so um, I'm going to start with my regular green, just getting some on the tip of my brush. And I'm going to go um, down here and put some straight up and slant it a little bit left and right. And I'm going to go little tiny bit in front of these rocks here along some of the edges or the shore of the water. You can do it in front of this rock here, right in the water, in front of the big rock. So just in little places with my regular green, I'm adding in some of this reed grass and I'm dipping the corner of my brush, just the corner of my brush into it. And that seems to work really well, but try to overlap or go in front of some of the rocks. And you could do it at the base of the tree too. And all in here, I think I just need to pounce more down here because I didn't really fill that in. So I can pounce more. You can go some pouncing in front of the rock. Okay, and just the corner of my brush, not very much. And make them different heights. So see how some are tall like this and some are short. Some are really short. Some go left, some go right. Okay, some are down in here. So wherever you think you need it to add it, some reed grass, and then you're gonna clean your brush and you use the lighter green just a little bit. When I say on the corner, that is how much I'm talking about, tiny amounts, um, especially for this background here and put it on top of that regular green. My brush is too wet, so I really need to cl clean and dry it, really squeeze the brush and put in some of that lighter re reed grass. Right in front, do some right in here. Again, make sure it can curve a little bit, but make sure it's not all just straight up and down. Going in front of the tree. In front of the water. putting it in where you think you're going to need it. So we have some really nice things in here, but there's something missing. So a lot of times painters put in things in threes or in a triangle. So for example, we have in the foreground, we have this beautiful big tree with this beautiful rock or big rock. I don't know if it's beautiful. <laughs> And so I need a, a smaller tree about here, almost maybe a shrub, maybe a tree. So I'm going to take my um, brown and I'm going to make a shorter tree because it's far. Okay, so I put in my shorter tree trunk here to complete this triangle with the brown. I started with the brown and then I'm going to do my light brown just a little tiny bit on my left side of the trunk. Okay, then I'm gonna start making the tree pouncing with a brown. Just pouncing, just a short tree, okay? Because it's farther away. So you don't want it to be too much paint on your brush when you're doing this. Okay, so this is just the brown. And then going in with my green on top. Go over the trunk. 
that is very dark on the video there that's a little bit better and then taking my um, brown and my dark green combined and making a shadow going down the same direction as this shadow so this is going from here diagonally down right so here diagonally down right and if you don't like it you can put some reed grass over it okay So I'm going to put some, I'll do some light reed grass at the base there to kind of disguise. And oh, I forgot the highlight, right? So the highlight would be in the blue. There's the light blue and a few areas on the left not too much if it's too much you can go right in with your regular green and go right on top just pouncing straight up and down and go on the right just a little bit and that is very hard to see on the video but super shiny and the light's all wrong. Okay. So let me zoom out. That is our painting that we're going to do on page 14. So good job. You finished it.